what science has now learned, and it's so fascinating, is that the choices we make in life will alter how our genes are expressed. This is big. People need to really pay, sit up and pay attention to this because science is now confirming scripture. And in lectures that I do, I often ask the audience, which is more scientifically accurate, the Bible or Charles Darwin? Well, guess what? It's the Bible. Darwin hypothesized that it was mutation over millions of years that caused his finches to have different beaks. Science has actually now proved it's epigenetic modification. Epigenetic, the, the instructions sitting above the genome, telling the genes how to express themselves, which are changed based on experience. What we go through in life, the foods that we eat, the choices we make, uh, the environment in which we live will actually alter the genes in, in telling which genes to turn on and which genes to turn off. What we know about genetics and addiction is that behaviors, sensations, input into the brain will use the DNA to change how the cell responds. And basically what happens is that genes are turned off or turned on based on what that response is. While the DNA doesn't change, the expression does. So the ability to be aware of environment, the ability to respond may be genetically coded, but when we begin changing it, the term we use is epigenetically. When we change how that's expressed, we change the enzymes that are made, we change the response of the cell, and that change becomes a part of the genetic expression. It doesn't happen generally with one exposure to pornography. It's the repetitive, volitional exposure to pornography um, that will cause this type of uh, gene expression to happen, such that you alter your pleasure circuits and you alter the inhibitory feedback, which would tell you not to do this. And that's epigenetic modification, changing your brain function. When we have kids, we not only give the sequence to our kids, we will pass along the instructions two and three generations down. And so if we become addicted to stuff, we can pass along to our kids gene constellations that make them more vulnerable to addictions. Conversely, if we get victories over stuff, we can actually pass on advantages. There's good animal evidence that that change in expression can be transmitted to the offspring. Those enzymes, those mechanisms, those genes that are turned off may also be turned off in the next generation. So we can pass along both positive things in our life and or negative depending on the choices we make in life. And so the Bible is actually more scientifically accurate than Charles Darwin because we do pass down to our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, the experiences that we go through in life based on the epigenetic modifications. They will get not only our genes, but the instructions on how those genes are expressed. Many adolescents will say things like, hey, it's my body, I can do what I want. Only if you're never gonna have kids. If you're gonna have kids, it's not only your body, it's your kids, your grandkids, and your great-grandkids' body too, so be careful what you do with it. Don't think of it as a, as a battle you're just fighting for yourself. You're fighting for the very lineage that God gave you. And if you will break this curse, then your sons and your daughters have a better shot, and your grandchildren have a better shot. My son's name is Jubilee, because his dad took the courage to break the curses off of him. I want to invite you to do the very same thing for those you love.